Vice President Mike Pence is dealing with the fallout from Wednesday's attack on the Capitol, but in the days since that assault, he has not spoken with President Trump. The vice president returned to the White House on Friday after nearly 48 hours of Democrats calling on him to invoke the 25th Amendment and remove the president from office. The two men did not meet while he was there. Pence has not yet commented on his position. Sources tell CBS News that President Trump refuses to turn over power to Pence or ask him for a potential pardon. Let's go ahead now and bring in Vice News political correspondent Liz Landers. Liz, thanks for joining us. You were embedded with Vice President Pence's team during the election. Do you see Pence breaking with the president to invoke the 25th Amendment? And what do you make of his silence up until this point? I don't see him breaking with the president at this point to invoke the 25th Amendment. Um, I think, look, the vice president, uh, according to people that I've been talking to for years now about him, his relationship with President Trump is a loyal soldier. He sees his role as the vice president truly to serve President Trump, uh, regardless of what that situation is. I spoke with a source who's close to the vice president earlier today, uh, who's spoken with the vice president in the last 24 hours, who said that it is, quote, highly unlikely that we will see the vice president use the 25th Amendment. Uh, reading between the lines there a little bit, just from my coverage of him over the last four years, though, I would say that it's interesting that, as you mentioned, the vice president has not publicly said on the record or his staff has said on the record what will happen with the 25th Amendment. But right now, it sounds like they are batting that down. And also, that would be um, a historic move. The, the 25th Amendment has never been used that way by a vice president and a majority of the cabinet to push the president aside. Uh, so I don't think we should expect to see Mike Pence uh, create history by using it. Well, Liz, as you said, uh, Vice President Pence considers himself a loyal soldier. He has been one of President Trump's most loyal supporters. Um, but where does that loyalty lie uh, when it came into conflict, uh, what he thought was right based off of his constitutionally mandated duties in terms of certifying the election results, and what the president was asking of him when the two diverged, he chose to do what he thought was his constitutionally obligated duty. So uh, I I'm wondering if you can shed any more insight into the vice president's thinking, as many people feel like now those two have come into stark contrast. And, and what do you expect from him in these final days in office? Yeah, I think the last week has put a real strain on the relationship between President Trump and Vice President Pence. As you mentioned, uh, the vice president had been uh, in counsel with his, his legal team ahead of what happened on Wednesday, and he put out a letter explaining that he was not going to overrule any of the um, duly elected um, electoral college votes that had been cast for uh, the incoming administration of Biden and Harris. Uh, Pence said, look, that is not my constitutional role to find another slate of electors. And that apparently infuriated President Trump. We heard him talk about that from the podium of um, that Stop the Steal rally on Wednesday. And I think that for the next 11 days, Vice President Pence is going to have his head down, according to this source that I spoke with, and is going to be working on this transition. He is committed now uh, at this point, late in the game, I would add, because it's now 11 days until Biden and Harris take the office um, and take the White House. But Pence is in communication with the COVID task force that he heads up to make sure that the vaccine distribution uh, channels and lines are all open so that the Biden team knows what's going on. He uh, apparently, his national security team is in touch with Harris's national security team as well to make sure that that is a smooth transition to I think that uh, Pence is probably going to try to stay out of the limelight for the next few days, which is going to be difficult, by the way, because as you mentioned, there's a lot of pressure on him to invoke the 25th Amendment right now. And if that doesn't happen, which I would be surprised if uh, he did use the 25th Amendment, we know that House Democrats have said that they're going to go ahead and move forward with impeachment. Uh, so this there's a lot of pressure on Mike Pence right now, uh, and he is sort of hanging back in the wings.
Yeah, and Liz, some Democrats have said that they believe that Vice President Pence is complicit in what happened at the Capitol because he staunchly supported the president through his entire term, and he did not speak out against false statements or call any of the president's statements false, at least publicly. How does the vice president navigate this sort of criticism, and what does this mean for his future in politics? I think it's a great question because I think that, um, look, as soon as President Trump lost the election in November, there was talk about who would run again in, in 2024. Obviously, Trump and Pence's names have come up in that conversation. Uh, but I think that from what I'm hearing from sources who are close to him, I think we should expect the vice president to sort of lay low um, in the next few months as the Biden administration comes in. And then, you know, once there are policies that the Biden and Harris administration are putting out there, I think that you might start seeing the vice president uh, come out and speak about policy. But it sounds like um, he probably will not be super engaged in politics right now, because as we've seen, the Republican Party is experiencing a real splinter and a a lot of infighting right now um, um, among Republicans, some who are calling for the president now to be removed from office. Uh, so obviously Mike Pence is not doing that himself, but he, I think, is trying to distance himself as much as possible um, as he can when you're right. He was up there uh, sort of cheering in the background, uh, not as vocally as President Trump was, but not speaking out against these fraud, these claims of a fraudulent election. Well, uh, President-elect Joe Biden has extended an invitation to Vice President Pence to attend the inauguration. We know, of course, that the president has already said that he will not be in attendance, to which uh, the president-elect said that that was OK by him. Um, do you know what the vice president's plans are? And in this way, will he represent the—if he does attend, rather, will he represent the peaceful transition of power, then? Does he feel that obligation? I think he does. And I think that we should expect him uh, to probably attend the inauguration. Uh, and I would not be surprised if he invited Kamala Harris, the incoming vice president who will be moving into the Naval Observatory in just a few days' time, to come by the Naval Observatory before she takes uh, office there. Pence is very traditional in those kinds of ways. He, uh, according to uh, some of the folks that are close to him, he, the vice president, was very um, happy that President, that Vice President Biden at the time invited him over to the Naval Observatory and welcomed him and Karen Pence uh, to that home and to see sort of what the duty was like as vice president, which I have always found ironic because up until uh, sort of recently, the, the vice president had not really acknowledged Biden as the incoming administration. But I do think that he uh, will probably attend that inauguration for uh, the incoming president, Biden, on January 20th, and probably will be the face of that peaceful transition of power since President Trump, unsurprisingly, has said he will not be there. All right. Liz Landers, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me.